So first I'm going to go over the problems that I've been having with it because I know everybody's interested in that. When you turn this thing on, to flip through the bands and the channels, you have to hold the button to flip through bands, push the button to go through the channels. So let's, I've tried multiple receivers. I have this, which is a, a Chinese model a 600 milliwatt receiver with my homemade antenna. Um, I've also homemade my receiver antenna. And then that wasn't working out too great. It was doing okay, but it wouldn't get me more than like about 200 feet. And then, so I got an Immersion RC 600 milliwatt with the Mad Mushroom with an air screw, expecting that to do much, much better. But to my surprise, it is not better. It's actually, it's actually only about 50 feet better. So I, I haven't tried all the bands and all the channels on the Immersion RC, but basically I'm having a serious range issue. Okay, that aside, another issue I'm having is that the screen on this thing is enormous. It, it, it's huge, and you were using crappy little 600 TV line cameras, and we're plastering it across this huge screen, and off, obviously it's going to be lower quality looking because it's so big. And in, as a comparison, the Fat Sharks, which have a tiny little screen, look super sharp because it's a tiny little screen. Um, that being said, I don't think that the head plates are any less quality. There's a lot of discussion about how they are blurry or ghosting or um, the edge contrast is too high, which is what I personally experience. Uh, but that's actually not the case. An overview of the gear that I'm using. Got the Sony Superhat 600 mini TV line camera from Surveil Zone. Uh, the Blue Beam set. Uh, Immersion RC 600 milliwatt. Mad Mushroom on the, on the head play. Have an FR632 with a homemade antenna. And the reason I'm using this particular FPV screen is because when I had my Fat Sharks, I would used to compare the Fat Sharks to this screen, and it looked just about identical, except that the Fat Sharks were smaller. It's a 640 by 480, 480 screen, and it's, a, it's supposedly a, a match for the camera. So now we're going to go for range. Uh, it's over there. I have a pointing outside, so which is a typical FPV landscape. Uh, you can see it in there. So I'm going to leave it there. Walk outside. And I know people say, people are going to say, like, oh, it's not meant to go through doors and walls. But uh, 5.8 does go through some things. And it shouldn't have a problem with 30 feet through a wall. I mean, I mean this, is, this is not a wall, this is a window. I should not have any signal break up. This is on channel 5740, and it's about the same on, I've tried three different channels. So let's see how far this actually takes me. And this is pretty much line of sight. I have a, a foam chair, a little tree, and a window between me and the craft. Maybe a hundred feet away. 
There I am. I, I'm not even sure. Uh, it's, it's just giving me a blue screen too. I'm not sure this is even 100 feet. But this is pretty much line of sight. This is about what I'm getting flying. I, I, I thought it's a lot worse than I thought. I thought it was giving, giving me about two. Three, this is this is barely 100, 150 feet. <laughs> So in the comparison video, you saw that the um, FPV screen was kind of warped. That's because it didn't have the Frenzel lens in front of it, like the head plays do. But you could also see that the head plays were much clearer and sharper than the screen was. If you were to shrink this screen down to the, I don't know, one inch size that the Fat Sharks is, less than one inch, it's probably a half an inch, yeah, it would look really sharp and nice. But ultimately, the head play is giving you more quality. You are able to see more. We just unfortunately have to deal with cameras that have really crappy quality and low quality video transmission because that's where we are today. If you have a HD stream, the head plays are an absolute must because there's nothing else that's going to give you this size of a screen and this high resolution of a screen all in this package. Um, the weight issue is an issue. It's mostly an issue because when it's up on your head and you're trying to walk around, it's wobbling about and it doesn't really let you walk around. So I'm probably going to strap up a neck strap to it because it's a pain in general. Um, so it's just bulky. But overall, it's a really good product. I think the range issue has to be resolved. I don't know if it's with the head play or if it's with my transmission gear or what it is. But um, I'm going to talk to Get FPV and hopefully they can help me out with it because this is just sad. I literally bought the most expensive stuff and the highest and highest recommended stuff I could find. I mean, this is a $65 antenna set, which I actually don't really recommend because my homemade set was almost as good. But anyways, about the head play, it's a great unit if the problems with it get resolved. If I can resolve them, I will update my video if I can get the problem resolved. Otherwise, I'll be putting up for putting them up for sale and looking for another product. Uh, if you guys have any advice, information on how I can improve this, please let me know. I am going to try every other band I can find on this thing in attempts to get a better range. Um, please, I'm open to all options. Thanks.